Welcome to the screencast on working with cylindrical coordinates in MATLAB. This screencast is going to mainly focus on plotting functions that are given in cylindrical coordinates, but we're also going to start by talking about how to convert backwards and forwards between cylindrical coordinates in 3D and rectangular or Cartesian coordinates in 3D. Before you watch this screencast, you really need to go back and make sure that you've watched the uh, screencast on polar coordinates in MATLAB because cylindrical coordinates have a lot to do with polar coordinates. So what are cylindrical coordinates anyway? Uh, cylindrical coordinates are just yet another way to locate a point in three-dimensional space. Ordinarily we use Cartesian or rectangular coordinates where we specify an X, a Y, and a Z component coordinate for our point. Um, in cylindrical coordinates it's almost the same. Uh, instead we specify a radius, a distance away from the origin, an angle that we make with the XY plane, and then a Z uh, height coordinate as well. So the R and the theta in cylindrical coordinates are just the polar coordinates for X and Y, and Z is the same Z coordinate as you use for Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. This makes cylindrical coordinates very closely related to polar coordinates, and in fact we can use the same commands in MATLAB for converting from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates in 3D that we do for converting between rectangular and polar coordinates in 2D. Let's go over to MATLAB and see how that works. So remember the commands to convert back and forth between polar and Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates were the commands cart to pol, cart to pol, or pol to cart. Let's pull up the documentation on that and you'll find something kind of interesting. Let's start with cart, or actually pol to cart. When you call this up, what you see here is there's actually another way to call this, and that involves the z-coordinate. Uh, so this is going to be our way to convert back and forth between not polar and Cartesian, but cylindrical and Cartesian. You can actually add a third argument, both to the input and to the output of Paul to cart, and also cart to Paul, uh, to just specify the z-coordinate. Now since the z-coordinate stays the same between Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates, it's the same number uh, referencing the same thing, uh, this Paul to cart function also works for cylindrical coordinates. Let's take a look and see how that works. I'll clear my screen off from all this stuff. And uh, let's suppose I have the cylindrical coordinate point given with an r equal to 3, an angle of pi over 2, and a z of 5. So in cylindrical coordinates that would be 3 comma pi over 2 comma 5. Let's convert that to rectangular coordinates. So I'm going to specify a vector for my output containing x, y, and z and I'm converting from cylindrical to Cartesian, so I'm going to say pole to cart. I'm going to pretend like these are polar coordinates and the z-coordinates just along for the ride. Now remember in the pole to cart function, as the little tooltip is bringing up here, remember we have to put the angle first, so pi over 2 is the angle, uh, rho or the radius was 3, and the z-coordinate was 5. So if I do that, uh, this will convert back to uh, rectangular coordinates. And this number right here is effectively 0, so 0, 3, 5. And I can go back the other way as well if I want to convert, let's say I had the Cartesian point 2, negative 1, 3, and I want to convert that to cylindrical coordinates. Well, I would specify an angle for my output, then a radius and a z-coordinate. Remember the angle comes first, the uh, radius and angle swap places, and I'm converting uh, from Cartesian to quote-unquote polar, really cylindrical coordinates here, and I'm just going to feed it the x, y, z to negative 1, 3, and this will give me my theta, my radius, and my z value. So that's pretty cool. We can use the polar coordinate conversion functions to do cylindrical coordinates as well. That turns out to be the key in figuring out how to plot uh, functions in cylindrical coordinates. So let's go back to the presentation. I have a little flow chart to remind you of and a new one to show you. So unfortunately for us, there's not a single MATLAB command that will just plot a function in cylindrical coordinates. So what we're going to do is take the usual way that we plot Cartesian functions in 3D, which is treated in another screencast, and then add one extra step to it to be able to plot cylindrical functions. So here's how that's going to work. So first of all, here's what you already know. This is a little flowchart for how to create a Cartesian 3D plot in MATLAB. You start with the function z equals f of x, y, uh, and then remember we have to do several steps first we create a vector that represents uh, one of our input variables x and for example you could type one space negative three to three or just whatever you want to define x as being. You create another vector for y and then we have to create a mesh grid which is going to represent sort of points in the x y plane that we're going to plug into our function. So that command was bra square bracket x comma y square bracket equals mesh grid x y. 
And uh, then we use the function and apply whatever our function says, I mean, it's x squared plus y squared or something to that effect, to create a matrix of z values. So now we have three matrices, really, uh, x, one for y, and one for z. And once we have those, all that data, we plot it using either the surf command or the mesh command. That's how we plot 3D Cartesian functions. Now to plot a 3D cylindrical function, there's only one extra step. Now here's the workflow for that. I'm gonna start, much of this is the same thing. We're gonna start with a function of R and theta that gives us a height value Z. So we're gonna, just like the first step before, we're gonna create a vector for one of our input variables, say theta, create a vector for the other input variable, R, and then create a mesh grid. Theta R is mesh grid of whatever I defined up here for theta, whatever I defined up here for R. And then I'm gonna create, use my function, my, my uh, cylindrical function, to create a matrix of Z values. So far this is exactly the same as how you plot 3D functions in rectangular coordinates. What we're gonna do, and the new extra step is right over here on the right, we're gonna convert all those values for theta, R, and Z to Cartesian coordinates using the pull to cart command. Just like we used the pull to cart command a moment ago to, to convert a single triple of uh, numbers from Cartesian to polar and from polar to Cartesian, I can actually use this command on an entire matrix of values at a time. I don't have to apply them separately. So I'm just going to take theta RZ and convert them into XYZ values using pull to cart. And then uh, what have I got? I've got a whole bunch of Cartesian coordinates. So I'm just going to plot them using my good old fashioned surf or mesh commands. Now let's see how that works. So now let's plot a couple of cylindrical coordinate functions. Let's start with the function z equals r times cosine theta. So again, theta and r are the input values here, and z is r cosine theta. So again, following the workflow, I gotta first create a vector of values for theta. So theta equals, let's say, lin space going from zero to pi. And I gotta do the same thing for r. Let's let r uh, go from, that's a radius, so just let it go from negative uh, three to three, for example. And now I have to create a mesh grid for those values. So theta r equals mesh grid theta r. Now I apply my function to the mesh grid. So z is equal to just r times cosine theta. I don't have to do anything special for that as long as I have my mesh grid defined. Okay, now this is a lot, this is a whole lot of, as you can see in the workspace over uh, to your right there, that's a whole lot of cylindrical coordinates. So we need to convert them all to Cartesian. So I'm going to define x, y, z equal to converting from cylindrical to Cartesian. So P O L to cart of theta R Z. All right, now if I type mesh or surf, uh, however you want, mesh uh, x, y, z, I should get what I'm supposed to get, which is a, it's really a plane. It's a circular disk cut out of a plane. And I can grab this thing and rotate it, look at it edge on. I can use the plot tools command to change the way it looks and so forth. Let's do another quickie here. Uh, let's do z equals r, one that doesn't have a theta in it. So again, uh, let's let theta equal lin space, um, go from zero to two times pi this time. R, let's let that go from, uh, 0 to 4, just off the top of my head. Got to create the mesh grid for it. So theta r equals mesh grid theta r. And now uh, apply my function, z equals r. That's it. That's my function, z equals r. And uh, this is, again, a lot of cylindrical coordinates. You need to convert them to Cartesian. So x, y, z equals pole to cart of theta r, z. Now when I, uh, let's do surf this time, surf x, y, z, that thing, what I get is a nice little cone. That's what that is, it's a cone. It's a, almost like a linear function in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so this is actually working. So just follow the workflow and we'll be just fine. But if you really just don't like following a workflow every single time to do this, what you see here on the screen now is actually a text from an M file, a little script M file that I wrote for you, uh, where all you have to do is just go through and change the values for T1 and T2, R1 and R2, and the function you're using for Z, and just run the M file. This is what M files were made for, so please pause the screen and type this down, or just email me if you want me to send you a text version of it. Enjoy and good luck.